Hey, what's up guys? So tonight I'm going to show you some of my antique perfume bottles in my collection. Most of these are perfume bottles and smelling salt bottles. Quite interesting. We have all different decades here um, from the 1870s all the way through uh, the 1930s. Most of the bottles in the back here are Art Deco. They were made in Bohemia and France. And you see the uh, really cool, like futuristic look to them and how they were made um, and the shapes. You see like um, those really, really unusual shapes. Most of them have almost like an Egyptian uh, look to them with motif hand painted. And some of them even glow in the dark. Like this one over here uh, glows in the dark um, when you use a black light and you know, totally like shut the lights off. It glows green, which is uh, really quite interesting. Um, over here, um, actually down here, I forgot to show you. These are um, 1930s. Um, and 1920s French piston pump bottles that went in a lady's pocket. This is the original box that it came with. And these ones uh, we uh, made with uh, seashells and they were made by uh, Marcel Frank in France. Very, very interesting. He made all sorts of different perfume bottles. Um, here's my deco bottles in the back. So these are from the 1930s. Um, this one is an American one. Very, very interesting. Um, these ones are Bohemian. And this one is French, and you can see the hand painting on it. Very, very cool. This is actually an 1860s to 1880s lacquer snuff box with seashells, and you can see that. Um, then we have here, these are the older ones. These, Some of these are lay-down perfume bottles, and most of them are from France, Germany, England, and America. And we have a really interesting, this would have hung by a hook on a lady's skirt. And this is about 1880s. Really, really beautiful, probably bohemian glass. We have little miniature bottles over here, the little green one that looks like a grenade. This one is, uh, I have to polish it, it's sterling silver and it's actually um, Samson and Morden and it was made in England and it has like little etchings of little children playing on it. Very, very cool. And there's um, a tear catcher bottle, well they call them tear catcher bottles, but actually they hold um, Otto of rose oil in them. And a lot of people um, all over the internet call these tear catchers and they never caught any tears at all. So it's a lie. And they do that to sensationalize. Um, here's another one. Those type of bottles to make it so that people pay more money for them. Here's another example. And believe it or not, they just found out recently. Everyone thought these were probably made in France or made in Bohemia. But these were made in Germany. And they got the rose auto oil from Persia. Um, which is Iran today. So that's uh, pretty cool. Now you never see them in this beautiful cobalt blue color. It's very rare. And uh, here we have some uh, 1880s perfume bottles made out of a uh, cut crystal with st uh, sterling silver top. Some are American, some are English. We have these two English bottles here with silver tops. This one is probably from the 1890s. And this one is probably from about 1900 to 1915. And you see the beautiful hand cut stopper. Um, this one was made in Amsterdam. Um, very, very interesting. And it has an interesting top that when you twist it, it this was patented only by this particular company. And uh, it would open and when you twisted it again, it would close. You can see this beautiful green glass with gold gilt paint. Very, very cool. And uh, over here we have I forgot the name of this company, but it was uh, actually a company in New York City that actually sold um, uh, things that came from like Japan. And uh, this is probably from the 1920s. And Lucky Luciano, it was such a famous business doing so well that during the uh, Al Capone days, Lucky Luciano actually bought this company out and uh, was laundering money through it. So uh, <laughs> most of his stuff came from Japan. So we have a J Japanese lacquer box with two perfume bottles in it from the 20s. Uh, <laughs> what else do we have here? This is a toothbrush holder, a ladies travel uh, container made out of crystal and sterling silver. And she would put her toothbrush in there. This is um, like a ladies uh, probably face powder container. Um, here's a 1920s um, English perfume bottle or cologne bottle. He has another English one with a black onyx top. Very cool. Um, this one back here is English from about 1890. And it has a silver top. I have to polish all these. They're getting tarnished. But you can see the beautiful crystal uh, hand cuts in the glass. 
And this is again, um, another English piece. And look at the beautiful cut work. It's hobnail pattern, I believe. And then we have um, these ones. These are old, about 1880. Really cool. And a little miniature one here made in Czechoslovakia with a cabochon, probably from the 20s or the teens. And actually, yeah, this is uh, pretty much uh, my collection. Now, here's a 1930s Bohemian Art Deco glass bottle, and it's an atomizer. So there we go. And I'm going to just show you one or two more. And then, um, yeah, um, pretty much I'm got rambling on and on, but I find this uh, really fascinating. These old bottles are just really, really like a piece of artwork, wouldn't you say? Oh, and I, uh, yeah, I know I'm like chatty Cathy. I don't shut up. But uh, this one is from about 1924, 1922, and it's a French glass bottle. Um, I think it was made by the St. Louis Company, and uh, the top was made by another company in France. And when you turn this little button on the top uh, counterclockwise, the pump pops up, and then you see the spout actually right over here, and it has a chain. You unscrew this little cap, and then you pump. You pump the top when the pump pops up. And then you have your perfume uh, distributed onto your skin that way. Here's another really cool uh, cobalt blue bottle, probably from about the 1870s. And another antique 1880s glass bottle. This one was made in 1906 by Gebruda Rockman and Brothers. And that was from a company that was uh, in Czechoslovakia, or known um, as back then Bohemia, with the original, original bulb, which has not disintegrated which most of them do and have to be replaced. All right, so I'm going to continue to show the rest of my my bottle collection. And uh, I'm going to show you one more set. Hold on one second. So we have some more treasures. Here's a Barber uh, bottle. This is uh, probably from about 1900 to about 1910 or so, maybe 1915. And it's a beautiful green hand-painted bohemian glass bottle. And it has an unusual top on it. And uh, it pops up and this would have been in a barbershop and it would have held like witch hazel or alcohol pomade all sorts of things inside of it so look at that beautiful shape also that shape is uh, really outrageous um, over here we have uh, an ebony perfume bottle made out of ebony wood and it was made in England and uh, probably made about probably about the teens I'd say um, all right, so let's get in here. By the way, <laughs> that's my weird Victorian hair jewelry. Yes, it's made out of hair. So I'm not creepy, I promise you, but I collect this stuff because it's really, really unusual and unique. Probably made in the 1870s to the 1880s. Here's another one, by the way. This is a 1850s uh, Victorian uh, hair bracelet. It's actually made out of human hair. Let's zoom in on that. And uh, a lot of you are probably ready to throw up right now, but I think this is beautiful. And uh, the cool part is right in the center, this little thing pops open. This is 10 karat gold. And this pops open and there's a little glass window with another scene uh, of beautifully intricately weaved and plated hair. Quite, quite interesting. Okay, so let's uh, look at some of the perfume bottles. I'm gonna just zoom back out. And uh, what we have here is a smorgasbord of all different kinds. Um, most of them are made in France and made in Bohemia, which is known as Czechoslovakia. All right, so in the back we have, by the way, I have an original ad, and that's uh, by Marcel Frank. And this particular bottle was made in 1922. And uh, it's right back here. Let me get my pointer. And uh, it's this amber colored one. And it was made by the Moser Glass Company for Marcel Frank. And let's zoom in and I'll show you. It has this beautiful uh, golden frieze or little mural that goes all throughout the bottle. And it's all hand cut. And uh, it's missing its original atomizer uh, tube and bulb. And I replaced it. Now back here we have another uh, bunch of Czechoslovakian bottles. Um, made in about 1906 to about 1908. And this particular one is a piston pump bottle made out of beautiful cobalt blue glass with hand painting. And again, made by the Gerbruda Rockman Company. And look at that beautiful piston pump on the top. Now, when you press that down and you turn it clockwise, um, it stays down. And when you press it down again, um, place your finger on the little button and turn it with your finger, it pops up. Now, here's another Gerbruda Rockman bottle and a beautiful, beautiful blue color like a cobalt with this hand painting and gilding 
Let's zoom in on that to show you. Really quite lovely with the original rubber bulb. And this one was made in 1906. <laughs> I found the archives from the co uh, company with their designs. Here's another Gerbruda Rockman uh, glass atomizer bottle with the crinkle, like the crackle type of glass with the hand uh, gilding on it. And uh, really, really lovely. Another um, piston pump atomizer bottle. Um, I believe this one is French. Really, really pretty hand painting. And uh, over here we have uh, some more uh, piston pump bottles. This one again was made by Gerbruda Rockman, probably about 1908, 1906, 1910, right around there. And we have another one over here. Look at the beautiful uh, workmanship on the top. This one is probably older. And uh, all this beautiful hand painting. Now to the right of it is a really rare bottle. And it's uh, actually French, and it was probably made by the St. Louis Glass Company in France. And uh, look at that beautiful, beautiful painting on it. And uh, yes, it is definitely French. That's a French patent. Um, that's like an abbreviation for something for um, a French patent. And you have Made in France written over here. And this is the rarity right here. All four piston pumps um, distribute in four different chambers, different perfumes, and you can mix the different perfumes. And uh, this was like something, like some kind of really crazy invention back then. And so these all untwist and they have chains so you don't lose the little caps. Um, and when you're not using it, you just screw the cap back on. Really, really cool stuff. Now to the right of that is an 1870s cobalt blue uh, ladies travel perfume bottle. And the little top is hinged, it pops open. There's a stopper in there. But look at that color and that hand cut work and the little cabochon. Now to the right of that, this is a hobnail pattern, a, green, um, a clear to green uh, cut glass uh, made by the Baccarat Glass Company in France. And it's another atomizer piston pump, probably from early 1900 to about 1915. And uh, again, look at that hobnail pattern and that cool little nozzle. All right, over here, yes, and we have antique teddy bears also. Really fast, this is an early Ideal American teddy bear. Ideal was one of the first companies to invent the teddy bear in about 1906. Um, this one's a 1922 Ideal teddy bear. Look at the stitching on the nose. He's in great shape. Next to him is a little, probably a French um, or a German 1930s teddy bear. He, he was pink at one time, believe it or not, and he faded with uh, age. Um, next to him is a little clown teddy bear from the 1920s, 1930s with his original clown hat with a bell on it. Um, back there is a French teddy bear from the 1920s, 1930s. Really cool stuff. Then I have my antique spectacle collection, and these uh, have long yet handles. Um, this one is actually uh, white gold. Um, really, really beautiful white gold. Um, let's see what else we have. Okay, we have another... Um, uh, this is a perfume bottle, actually, well, it's more of a barbershop bottle. And look at the top on that. And we have some more creepy Victorian hair jewelry next to it. And this is Bohemian. And you can see the hand painting. And this would go in a barbershop. Um, here's another cool thing. So this is um, a three-chamber perfume bottle caddy set. And uh, you can see the three bottles that fit into this little container that's made out of gold with a beautiful muse, like a, almost like a Greek or Roman goddess scene. And it has the original label on it. And uh, I believe it was by um, Charles May. I'm not sure, but it was probably made um, in the late teens, early 20s with the original label. Really, really rare. Um, those, those sell for hundreds of dollars, probably um, in the $800 range. Now we have another Marcel Frank piston pump tortoiseshell style 1930s ladies travel perfume bottle. These um, over here are really cool. These are all my cut glass uh, pieces. And this is made by Baccarat in France. And Baccarat, as you can see, made gorgeous, gorgeous hand cut crystal. And uh, this is a smelling salt bottle. Um, this one is pretty cool, look at that. And we have all these uh, beautiful patterns cut into the glass. Um, here's another one. This one's more skinny and tall. Very, very beautiful. And these were probably made in the 1880s. Um, here's another 1880s bottle, a uh, really, really pretty pattern. And then on the top, we have sterling silver with daisies cut into it. Here's a lay down perfume bottle. And look at that, look how 
really cool how it comes to a point like that. And this I have to clean. This is sterling silver. It gets tarnished with age. By the way, this creepy thing is a Black Forest needle case um, made probably about the 1870s to the 1880s. Really cool stuff. All right. And last but not least, we got a 1930s Knickerbocker um, teddy bear over here holding some antique spectacles with the original chain that went around a lady's neck. A Gluber and Hoffman antique Marie Antoinette doll made out of bisque. And over here, we have another perfume bottle. We have 1880s abalone shell um, opera glasses, a tortoise shell uh, snuff box, really cool stuff. And then over here, we have some more antiques. We have a Fluffy the Cat from Stife from the 1920s. Really, really cute. I, mean, I, I did that. I know it's weird. And then we have a uh, Meerschaum pipe. Actually, that's a cheroot pipe. Some more opera glasses. Some antique porcelain boxes. Um, we have some dust. <laughs> I have to clean this out. And we have some more antique uh, opera glasses. These are from the 1880s. And these are from the 1920s, 1930s, and they're German. And then we have a German jewelry box and some more old toys uh, made out of mohair. Very, very cool. Um, we have another teddy bear back there that was made by Ideal, probably in the 1920s, 1930s. And more opera glasses. These are really cool. They look like ivory. They're made to look like ivory. But these I love the most. These are just gorgeous. They have a little stick that extends out and folds out. Really pretty stuff. And this is a <laughs> this is a 1950s Venetian glass box. Really cool stuff from Italy. We have back here, we have a lady's uh, sterling silver little dance purse with a compact in there with a mirror. More, um, we, ha we have more opera glasses and a 1950s Stife Teddy original. All right, guys, I have way more than this. So if you guys wanna see, write in the comments below if you wanna see more of my collection. And I'll be more than glad to show you. All right, so long. See you all soon.